So the integrated pastoral plan is a work of commitment, a work of collaboration, and a work of communion. And if we do this work well, well, to do this work, we here have to find that commitment to do it because it's, it's not going to happen anywhere else. It's either we take responsibility as Cygnus Caribbean and we take responsibility as the communication person in the diocese to make this move forward or it wouldn't happen. Without this happening, getting the church to the new evangelization, I'm not sure how to do that without moving us to this integrated pastoral plan. It's a work of collaboration because as you saw from Sister Angela Ann's presentation, this can't be done by us alone. We have to really be great communicators to bring other people together to the, to the dialogue and remembering Pope Paul VI who says that dialogue is a new way of being church. And, and that's what we have to do, get people to this dialogue on a way forward for our church. It's a way of communion because communion is one of these great strengths and gifts that God gave to the church. And, and on the night before his, he died, this is what he prayed for. May they be one, that just as you and I are one. Because without communion, he also says that in, in, the, in the farewell discourse, that the world will never believe that it was you who sent me. So communion is a precondition, is what is required if people are going to believe the message of Jesus Christ. I am convinced that the greatest challenge to evangelization in the world today is the divisiveness of the Christian. And, and until we can cross that divide and find a, a path to communion, we're not going to have the credibility to really be evangelizers of the evangelizers of the people in the Caribbean. This is a um, a kind of a framework for how the plan would actually would how it would work. the The whole plan is about the new evangelization, and the whole plan is an attempt to evangelize the people of God in the AEC region. So, so everything is going towards, towards this. The, the way the plan came about last year, Nula asked for something in the, in the Cygnus Caribbean meeting. And I don't think Nula understood what she asked for when she asked for what we really need is a, is a, a, a plan, an integrated plan of communications for everybody involved. And I said, that's a great thing to want. And I think we should go to it, but it can't happen in one meeting, and it can't happen with Cygnus Caribbean alone. And so at the end of the last Cygnus Caribbean meeting in Port of Spain, one of the items on the agenda, and you'll see that, was that Cygnus Caribbean will support the, the AEC bishops in this integrated plan. And I was asked if I would take it to the to the bishops, which I did, worked with Sister Angela and created this framework, went to the bishops, and the bishops have signed off on that, and you'll see the mandate from the APM just now. So based on that, the, the Communications Commission, Pat Pinder, Joe Harris, and myself on the Communications Commission, and the AEC bishops have commissions for different things, and you always would have three bishops on a commission. One is the chair and in the communications is myself. Pat Pinder and Joe Harris are on it um, because Pat Pinder is a, the, the head of the president of the conference and because of what was required for communications, I felt he needed to be here to have his authority to move this thing through the whole conference. And in every stage, he's been very supportive of where we're going. So at a high level, planning level, the bishops from the from the conference would be there, Sister Angela as a consultant, Nula as the president of Cygnus Caribbean, and Father John as the general secretary for the, for the AEC conference. And, and this is really the 10,000 feet up helicopter view where we take it to them and say, will this pass the bishops? Will the bishops agree to this? How do we make this happen? This is what we're thinking. The working group to make this happen is the Cygnus Caribbean executive, together with Sister Angela and myself, and uh, 
Father John Fassad, who is part of this of the Cygnus Caribbean Executive. And that will be the working group that will coordinate and stimulate and, and make this happen. And how are we going to make this happen? Well, within the Cygnus Caribbean as, a, as an organization and our collaboration on a monthly basis to keep the plan moving forward and to ensure that whatever commitments we do, we actually step up to the plate and work together in collaboration to, to move us forward. And so that's how it's going to happen. The, we'll have some technical consultants, and that'll be from the University of Dayton, and they will be related to directly by Sister Angela Ann. And we have the AEC Bishops Conference, and that'll be related to directly by Pat Pinder, by Archbishop Pinder. So we have all the different people who are responsible, or who have a stake, or who have to say something about it, are all, are all here because without the bishop signing off you wouldn't get a mandate in your diocese to do the things that you are you are being asked to do here and so we have to work at both levels we have to get the bishops to see and agree to a way forward and agree that this is something that they want and then we have to get them communicating with you as their delegate for communications and us working together to flesh so, that out the plan got its birth here at Cygnus Caribbean because it has to be AEC and because we want it to affect more than communications, individual people, but departments within the AEC and departments within the diocese. This is, this is how it would work. So what's the benefits of doing this? Why would we want to do this? Because diocese now it's so difficult to develop communications. It's changing so quickly. And then where do you want to start? So Port of Spain has an amazing communication um, outreach within the, within the church. But they have a newspaper that goes for 100 and how many years? 20, 125 years next year. Um, which is a very old newspaper. At, have the income to support a communications outreach because of that. There are few dioceses that have anything close to that. In fact, no diocese has anything close to that. Um, in the smaller dioceses, even pulling one or two or three people together for communications full-time is a real challenge. And most times, you're doing some specific thing. You're doing the newspaper, or you're doing a, a radio program, or you're doing a this, or you're doing a that. But the capacity to really think communications in a big picture and say, okay, well, we could work with this, then this, then this, then this, is something that is difficult to do at the diocesan level, but it's something that we can do at this level. For the big dioceses like Port of Spain, they have that capacity. For most of the small dioceses, to even raise your head above the, the weekly publication that you have to do and get something else done, is tough so it's setting out a, a, a chart or a template that will help us grow into and develop communications greater collaboration within the diocese so we've spoken about the silo effect already and and how do we get the other people working with us so that we really get communications as a engine for for pastoral life strengthening Cygnus Caribbean to facilitate the development of communications in the AC region. Because it's only if this group really takes root, grows, develops, and matures that the ongoing support and, and, and impetus for communications is going to continue to grow, strengthen support, and, and develop. Build capacity of communicators to move effectively to more effectively respond to their vocation. Because part of what we're doing is also working with us as communicators and how do we respond to the changing times and to what God has been calling us to. Mobilize all commissions in the diocese and in the AEC. That's the integrated piece. And use the tools of communications effectively to reach all of our Catholics. You know, most dioceses at best are reaching 17% of their of their catholics you know that because only 17 percent of the catholics come into church at best at best 
So if you, res if you expend all your resource to reach those who are already in church, it means that you have 80 something percent of your Catholics that you're not ministering to at all. How do we reach all of our Catholics? And, and you'd need media to help us with, with that. The AC bishops have a mission, it's up here and you can, you can read it. The first part states who the AC bishops are. The second part states what the mission is. And you see that new evangelization um, is, is a big piece of the, of the mission. In faithful communion with the universal church and each other, we proclaim Christ the Savior, promote worship, and lead our people to witness that Christ is the light illumining all issues of common concern in the church and in the world. And so this is what the AC Bishop's mission is. This is a priority. And the priority between now and 2019 is the new evangelization together according to Ecclesia in America and a Parasida. In Guadeloupe when we met, and that's when, when we met up with but Pascal, um, taking a million photographs at every event, it said it was further resolved that the work of all AC com commissions and subcommissions flow clearly from the mission priorities and goals established by the Not AC. only does the communications need to align, but every commission needs to align with those priorities. In our last meeting, which was in Port of Spain, it was resolved that the conference commits to raising 25,000 annually over a four-year period to, to sustain the research, design, and implementation and assessment phase proposed by the Communications Commission as part of the AC integra integrated pastoral plan for communications. So not only the bishops have agreed it, they walked through it, they've agreed that this is something that we're going to put resource and money towards. That's in US, yes. Not in, um, not in Trinidad. <laughs> That's in US. The, and, and you could tell that, um, that Lucille is a money person. She's a finance, yes. <laughs> I didn't say that, no. <laughs> oh yes, and I understand that. That the, and also in the APM this year, that the AC adopt as its pastoral plan, the following four priorities for mission and evangelization. The word of God, animating the pastoral life of the church, the Eucharist as communion, evangelization of the family, and the evangelization of structures as the four things that the AC is going to commit itself to working on towards 2021. And so the integrated pastoral plan have to understand this and work towards assisting that. So already Bishop Francis, who is the head of family for the AC conference, we've started a conversation already on a think tank um, using Zoom using personnel from around the region coming together to think through the family the evangelization of the family as at a Caribbean level and bringing in some other departments into that so that we have some real thinking together on one of the, the four priorities that's already in, in progress and we're already moving towards making that happen why a pastoral plan? Well, to foster theology and spirituality of encounter, uniting the AC region in the new evangelization. So if there's a, a reason, this was the bishops, and we hammered this out, and we went back and forth on it, but this is what the bishops would really like to see. Uh, spirituality of encounter and unity around the new evangelization. And I think that those two are, are really important because you don't get the new evangelization unless we have a spirituality of encounter and facilitate people with the encounter of Jesus Christ and start to expect it as part of our Catholic life. And, and that's a, one of the requirements for, and then the new evangelization is the ultimate goal that we have. The purpose of an integrated pastoral plan to assist the AC bishops 
to create a framework for all commissions at a diocesan and AEC level to act in a coordinated way towards the fulfillment of the mission and priorities of the AEC bishops. So communications, and this was one of the, one of the moments when the bishops' eyes opened and said, oh, so this is not just about communications. No, it's not. And uh, then I said, and that is why Archbishop Pinder is on the Communications Commission as the president of the AEC because it has implications for everything that we're going to be doing. And all the departments or commissions within the AEC would, be, would have to be working together on, on this. So this is Atatus Novi, and this is back in 1992. And you can read it, calling for the integ integrated pastoral plan for every diocese, every department, every ministry, every everything. And you'd see back in 92, the kind of prophetic vision that Atatus Novi had, and it's taken us 24 years to get to it. Well, they say it takes 25 years to receive a count, 50 years to receive a council. So we still have 25 years to go for that um, groundbreaking document. Last year, in our work together, we had put together the mission for Cygnus, a vision for Cygnus, and seven or eight um, objectives for Cygnus. And we said our vision was Catholic communicators in every diocese of the AEC as missionary disciples on fire with the Holy Spirit will utilize communications technology to promote an authentic encounter with Christ. And, and that's really the reason, that's the purpose, that's the vision, that's what we want to, to work towards. The elements of the plan, and this is coming out of Atatis Novi, a statement of vision. Where do you want to be by 2025 or 2020? Where do you want to be? An inventory or assessment, which we've already started. You all have done an inventory of your diocese and what communications exist in the diocese. And if you haven't yet done it, talk to Rosalie over there who has collected it. Okay. And then you have the, the purpose, the proposed structure for church-related social communications. Once we've done the inventory, how do we propose that, this, that a structure can emerge that holds this whole thing together? Media education, pastoral outreach, means of obtaining and maintaining financial support. <laughs> the, so those are the... So those are the, the phases, and, and each one has its own, its own its, or those are the elements, and each one has its own, its own impact and what we need to do. The plan is broken into four phases, a research phase, which we've already started, a design phase, which we will go into during our next year, an implementation phase, which will be the year after, and then an assessment phase when we come back and ask constantly on what we have done and how is it impacting towards getting us to our vision. In the research phase, um, getting sign off from all key stakeholders, and I think we've done that already. Cygnus Caribbean asked for this, the EC bishops have signed off on this, so it's back now at Cygnus Caribbean to say, okay, now that they have signed off, how do we move forward and how do we move to the next stage? And so we've, we've pretty much on that one, identify and sponsor the working team. Sister Angela started to speak to that already within your diocese so that we can help you to find and sponsor working team for this plan. Design and implement the research methodology. We are in progress in that. Um, analyze results and create forums at AEC and diocesan level to reflect on the results. We haven't done that yet because we need to finish the design, the research and, and all of our, our learning from that. The design phase also identifying an ad hoc committee, design and select models for implementation, present to the AEC bishops for a review and adoption. So that will be in May next year. 
we'd want to present something to them and get them signing off on it and then prepare the assistance staff for implementation, prepare assessment tools for implemented, implementing models. And then the implementation phase, as you can, can see the three steps, and then the assessment phase, you can see the four steps on that. So this is how we're going to be going forward. The document that I handed to you has timelines in it. And if you take a look at it, you'll see that we've set up a kind of a, a September to September, or whenever the, the AGM4 Cygnus Caribbean will be. But we've set up a kind of a period-to-period a, a -period approach and uh, said, okay, in this period, this is what we would be looking to achieving. And each month now, we need to fill in what we're going to do month by month between now and next year to ensure that when we get to next year, we, will, we would have done the piece, all the small bits of this design of research and design phase that we say that we would have done. And uh, you will see inside of there a mention of a pastoral letter on communications somewhere in the, by 2018, which would mean that somewhere by next year, we would have to have a working draft to be able to discuss at the level of Cygnus and to be able to, to flesh out and ensure that we have all the key elements and ideas required for this before taking it up to the bishops. What are some, some possible um, low-hanging fruit? Right now, they have three websites at a, diocese, at a AEC level. Um, each one of them needing some urgent attention. But each one can hold very important pieces of, the, of what we need to do. So there's a Cygnus Caribbean website that needs some, some work on it. There's the CSCC, the, the school website, that needs some work on it. There's the AEC Bishop's website that needs some work on it. If we got those three websites holding different pieces of what we really want for the Caribbean, then what we then can do under the AC website, anyone who already has uh, a website going can have direct links between AC and yourself on the diocesan page for the AC website. And anyone who doesn't have a website going right now, we could use that AC page for you and build out your website until you have it sufficient to be able to have a standalone website that can draw its own traffic, but you can have a, web, uh, a URL that can carry people directly to that website too. So in other words, rather than everybody scrambling immediately to build a website if they don't have it, if we work together and really thought through what information should go on which websites and how that will work best, we can actually strengthen our web presence in the Caribbean and one person's website might be excellent at doing um, kind of advocacy work and, and, and the social justice pieces. And we, 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 we refer to that website from everywhere in terms of advocacy. And another one might be great at apologetics. And another one might be great at something else. So that rather than everybody trying to be great at everything, if we really work together in collaboration, we could have some really great websites doing amazing things so that we can get everything we need done within the region with each website belonging to its organization but being coordinated uh, together so that we can build. The same thing for, for TV. Trinity Television is potentially going to be in 27 or 28. 28 different countries. Um, over the next year or two. They are now in, in, not in Grenada yet. They're now in two, in three countries, Trinidad, Barbados, and St. Vincent. When Trinity is in every country, one of the things we experimented with and will do some more work with going forward is actually doing productions here in Barbados, sending it to Trinity Television Live and, or, or pre-recorded and have it go on from Trinity Television so that we can see it in Barbados. So there are two concepts. One is break into it here and put on stuff from time to time for Barbados, and that's one concept. 
I think a more interesting concept is work within Trinity Television so that Trinidad gets to see stuff happening from around the Caribbean. And the, the, the channel can become a real portal for the life of the church in the Caribbean so that different people can see and experience the Caribbean church because we have each diocese participating in a program for five minutes or a program for half an hour or a program for an hour a month but but each little piece will add to the flavor of the of the whole caribbean and and seeing a church that is dynamic and alive in in that way i think would be a quite amazing there are several diocese that have radio um production right now and the hardest thing for anybody doing any kind of production on a 24 7 basis is content but if each of the diocese doing radio network together and shared their their resources and what, a, what pro programs they actually produce then we could have more production or more caribbean production on each radio station that could be then carried um links on our on our um websites etc etc so i don't want us to think in the old model of radio tv print and print is the same thing print has been much better at it because i know that catholic news has done a lot of work very early on bringing together when father michel was there bringing together the editors of all the print and, and that they've had that ongoing way of, of working but how do we think now these tools of communication not in silos but within a whole understanding of media and connecting it with all of the media that, that we are doing so that we start developing a presence for the caribbean church where each diocese has an, a, a, an amazing presence each institution has an amazing presence the ac has an amazing presence but we are all contributing to this whole picture that we're trying to to emerge and the fifth of course is is a integrated pastoral plan that is going to hold all of this together and chart the steps and the way forward for us to go we'll be using two tools to make this happen zoom you've been introduced to that already and um, zoom it's it's an online um, meeting um, conference teleconference software i remember in the late 90s there was a big teleconference show in england i went to it um, looking for this kind of equipment for the aec bishops because at that time i was talking with father farfa who was the general secretary and we were dreaming that this would be such a wonderful thing to have and uh, i went in and they had amazing teleconference equipment the cost was so foolishly ridiculous that i looked at this equipment it was an amazing thing but it was ridiculously expensive zoom now comes down to 150 us dollars a year that's what it costs to have access to zoom any time you want and the AEC took it the webex used to be 650 us dollars a year zoom is now 150 so it's it's becoming cheaper it's becoming better even st vincent took out a subscription to zoom because of the multi-island that they have so that they can have um speak to people without moving people around so those are the two the teamwork.com is a project management um, on the cloud and it's an amazing way of planning projects for people who are not working in the same office and rosalie is going to get you on teamwork.com once she gets on herself and everybody will have access to the integrated pastoral plan project and in that we will learn how to use that as a tool so that whatever pieces you have to do you can put it down in that with your timelines who else is responsible with you because it allows you to to have three or four people responsible for any task or any part, milestone or any part of the project so it will help us to set out the milestones and and create the tasks and assign people so that you would be able to keep track and then we would be able to help you keep track of where we are and the the, the times when we are ahead of game and guess what also when we have dropped the ball 
So some of the immediate benefits, one of, of them I think is that the bishops are directly involved in this. And so even to reach this stage, they've had to have a real conversation about what this looks like and to understand this means shifting how we've been doing work before and that we have to start working across the different commissions if we're going to make things happen going forward and that's already started as i said and so that that i think is one of the most one of the the first benefits and and that also means that when you come back from this and you speak to your bishop and you tell him this is where we're going next he's not going to be surprised when we have our next zoom meeting for the bishops to talk about where we are on this so he should be getting information directly from you as he gets the information when we have the meetings on Zoom to update bishops on, on where we are with different things. The development of the web presence, which I've said already, the greater collaboration, which is one of the key things that I think is necessary. The strengthening of, of TCN as a regional Catholic channel, reaching 20 different dioceses. That would be amazing if in five years' time, every diocese has some bit on, on, on TCN and you start to see the Bahamas and Belize and, and you start to see Guadeloupe and you start to see Grenada and, and every diocese doing different things so that you really have a, a sense of a Caribbean church emerging and, and greater collaboration between communication, between the communicators that is going to strengthen sickness. As each diocese really grows communication at the diocesan level, I think it is going to strengthen Cygnus at this level because as we, as we go deeper and deeper into growing communications at the diocese, we're going to need this kind of networking and support to help us to go forward. So what is required for success? Only three things. Only three things. The three C's. Only three things are required. Commitment. As Nula said in her report today, that um, we might be better at, at doing stuff than reporting, but we're still not good enough in either. And so the, the first thing is that we have to make a commitment that we want this to happen. That we have this vision. We want, we want to see this happening so that when we leave this meeting, it isn't back to business as usual. That we will take some hours in our month and say, okay, for, I'm going to give five hours a month or ten hours a month. To, to dedicate to this process going forward. Collaboration, the only way it's going to happen is through collaboration. That means we all have to turn up for the, for the Zoom meetings as, as far as humanly possible so that we can keep it working together and communion. That we have to find the ways to, to see that the glass is half full. And, and that because it is half full, it's half full because we've all brought our piece to it. And as we continue bringing our piece to it, it will become three quarter full and then completely full because we're all bringing more and more resource to the table. This is what Lucille was waiting for all the time. I should have started this first. <laughs> the funding proposal that we, we put forward, that I put forward to the bishops, um, which has, they have signed off as, as you've seen, is to do different things. Um, if this is going to work, we're going to have to find a way to, to have some support for us so that somebody has a responsibility for project managing this and for helping us to move forward. We have to find a way for assisting some dioceses that are not quite up to speed as yet. Um, whether in, in somebody going there, that uh, we thought many of um, somebody going in, working with the diocese and helping them to, to set up a bit. Then um, consultants, because we'll have to bring not only Sister Angela on, but other consultants down from time to time. And then for developing the websites, uh, we put in an amount there for the three regional websites. And we may even have some that we can support some of the other websites um, to help strengthen them. The, we might need some tools and equipment, some materials, but that's what the, the budget looks like. And that's what we're going to work towards.